guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are doing the Belle Baby Bag by Swoon Patterns. I've been meaning to do it for ages, but I just finally found some time to do it. Uh, so I have altered the pattern a little bit, as always, because that's what I do. Uh, so if you'd like to see how I make this bag, please stay tuned. Alright guys, so I just thought I'd start by sharing what I did. So, as usual, I've double printed everything to make it a whole piece instead of cutting on the fold. And then on the main panel, I've just put the, the length, not the width, but the length of all the straps that I need. Um, because the width of the strap will depend on the size of your hardware. So I'm using one inch hardware today, uh, but this I reckon would also look pretty cute in one and a quarter inch. So anyway... That's just what I did. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the outside funky pockets. So you should have two cut of the outside and I've interfaced all of the outside with the extra heavy non-woven iron-on interfacing, which is on my website. Um, and then the all the lining pieces, because it is a cotton, I have interfaced it with a woven iron-on in medium. Uh, and the base has got the base stabilizer on it, which is also on my website. Right, so I'm doing the cool funky edging on the top. Um, I believe they use a double fold bias, but because I'm using vinyl, I'm just going to fold it in half, uh, like so, instead of double. So mine's a little bit different, um, but the pattern says to baste all the pieces together. So all I have to do is just within the seam allowance, so I'm going to do about an eighth of an inch and I'm always going to backstitch. I'm just going to sew that top together. Then I'm going to go down each side. So I'm staying well within the seam allowance, but basically I'm now turning this into one piece. If you don't want to do the bias on the top, do them right sides together and then flip them over. If I, if I was going to do it that way though, I would also top stitch it once you've flipped it. Okay, so I'm going to do the other one as well. So I'm actually putting wrong sides together, which is something we never normally do. Just, which is why we're starting there, to be honest. Now it says to cut um, two really long strips of your um, edging, your tape. It's not bias tape, but your double folded tape. I, this is the last of this colored vinyl that I had. So mine's in like four pieces instead of two, like the pattern suggests, uh, but it's gonna end in the same result. So all I needed to make sure was that two of the pieces were this long, um, and then the two side pockets would have been included in the inch inch. Not quite meterage because they spoke in inches. All right, so that's now joined so that it's now just one piece that looks pretty on both sides. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my what's going to be the top edging, so like this, and I'm just actually going to fold it in half and crease it. So I'm just finger pressing this so that it gets a crease because that way that will then sit in there really nicely. Um, but by pre-creasing it, it's going to sit more evenly. Uh, if you don't have strong fingers, you should definitely use um, something to help you crease it. So this is from Bunnings um, in the, I think it's in the wallpaper section actually. I think that it, they use it to help like push the wallpaper on. Uh, it's also good for stickers, to put stickers on. I got mine, yeah, I got mine from Bunnings, but after I bought it, they had it in a place that sold, like, paint and sticker stuff. So, whatever works. But you just want to crease it. You could also probably use a credit card, or, like, a card out of your wallet. You're just trying to get a bit of a, a bit of a crease. So it's nothing major. You can just see it's got a bit of a bend. So what this is going to do is help us put this across the top. So now I'm just going to fold it over and pop it on there like that. Now I have increased my stitch length to three and three quarters. We're going to back stitch. I 
can see this end's folding, that's because the start got looped around the foot. There we go. I also decided to do a grey stitching on the brown vinyl uh, because a lot of my print is grey and I'm using silver hardware. But this grey just happened to go perfectly with the cute little hedgehogs on here. It's all a very cool palette, so if I had have done the antelope colour that I've got in the stitching, I think it would have looked a bit odd. I'm just going to back stitch and then grab some scissors and chop off the excess. Uh, so these scissors, because lots of people ask me about my scissors, are Fiskars. Um, they're sold at Spotlight. I've done a video on everything I use and the links on where to buy them. So just go check that one. So I'm just going to do the same to the next pocket. So it should be nice and stitched on the back and the front. If you've missed anywhere on the back, uh, just go back and fix it. But so long as you're doing the creasing nice and evenly, you should be okay. Fold it, crease it. You can also just do it with your fingers, whatever makes you happy. Um, if you don't want to do vinyl, uh, you could also do this in a fabric. So you would just double fold it so that all of your raw edges are on the inside, in which case you cut it twice as wide as this. So I'm getting a half inch piece uh, thickness here. So I have cut one inch because I'm folding it in half. If you were going to do it in fabric, you would cut two inches. I mean, you could do this double fold so that you didn't have that raw edge, but I don't think it's an issue and that would be very thick to sew through. I have done it on the Hullabaloo Hobo bag. Um, when I make another one of those, I will be doing it like this. Make sure we backstitch. So I'm stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And that will then also help make sure that I'm getting the back. So we're going to do the same to the outside pockets. So you should, I have done two in the fabric and then it says to cut, the pattern actually says to cut six in the lining, but what I've actually done is I've cut two in the outside, but only lined it with a medium and not the heavy or the extra heavy interfacing. And there is reasons for that. I wanted it to be like a bit of an accent. All right, so I'm just going to lift that up, pop that aside, and so now we're going to do the same to the next lot of pockets. We just want to baste them all the way around so that they become one piece of fabric because it's easier to deal with. And then we're going to put the accent binding along the top. like this pattern which I'm pretty sure I'm going to I will be selling this as a set so the baby bag will come with um, a change clutch which I have a pattern for by Lynn's Handmade so I will do a video on that probably next week I've mapped out the videos for this week already uh, also if you want to be in the swap that I'm doing you've got until Sunday to sign up and then we're going to draw names. So next week I will be doing the video on how to make the clutch for the swap. Alright, so I actually probably only need three. So I'm just checking to make sure this is long enough and I've doubled it over. So I only need to crease one more and I don't really need that fourth piece. If I had have had more vinyl, I probably would have done it the way the pattern's asked. And I have written it on the front to do it that way. And I could have done this also if I wanted to. I could have done this out of a fabric. 
but I don't have this color brown and I didn't want to do gray. I thought it might be too gray. I'm also not doing piping today, mainly because I didn't have enough of this color. I didn't really think it through until I had, had nearly finished cutting, to be honest. All right, so along the top, not the bottom, I fold it in half. Make sure we backstitch after a couple of stitches. Always stop with your needle down. And then I'm just going to chain stitch. So I'm going to pop the next one in and just continue sewing along. So I've got my needle down, lifted up my foot, back stitch, and then move along. cute little pockets so we're gonna go back to the big ones we don't need the side ones until we're basically constructing the bag but it's just while we're doing the accent because again you may have actually done your cut yours the way the pattern says you do it all at the same time makes it easier I was also smart I have a table just off screen where everything's sitting okay so we need to find the center so you can either measure it or just crease it so that is where we're going to stitch the bag on to the main panel. But before we do that, we need a ruler and an erasable pen. And we're going to measure three quarters of an inch out from that center fold that we just did. And again, on both sides, um, I haven't bothered to try and draw on the vinyl, it's not a big deal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to crease that. So it's going to go, that's going to be a crease. And then that one's going to be a crease. And so then we want to go three quarters back again, and then we're going to stitch this edge. So what we're doing is we're making a um, little folds, basically. So I'm going to stitch the outside ones. And I'm going to go bottom to top. Get it right on that crease. You can finger press it. You can iron it if you want to. Uh, just make sure you don't touch the vinyl with your iron because that's not good. We're going to back stitch. We're going to chain stitch as well. So we're going to grab the next one, put the center crease in. You can draw that center crease too if it's going to make it easy. So you can just get your ruler now and put the crease in if you want to, like that. And then three quarters of an inch out from there, and then another three quarters of an inch out. And then again, and again. So again, we're going to stitch the outside one. I'm just going to run that along the edge there, and that's going to create a nice crease for me. Now, I'm going to slow down when I get to that vinyl and I'm going to make sure that I backstitch through it so that it's nice and tough. And we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to, I'm going to grab and pinch at that line and then use the edge of the table to roll that crease in nice and firm and flat. Make sure that I backstitch the same to the other side. Bend, crease. Ooh. 
Beautiful. So then we can fold that in and that will sit like so. With a cute little bendy bit. So now grab one of your outsides. Uh, you need to put foam on the back. I actually forgot to iron it on. So I'm going to hit pause and go and iron the foam on. Okay, so I have put the foam on and then I have folded it in half and just put little marks at the top and the bottom of the center because that's going to help. Uh, so before we attach our pockets, we need to remember to put on our strap connectors. So we should have four of those. Um, all that stuff is other straps that we need to do, but I don't need them yet, so it's fine. Okay, so you've got a couple of options here. Um, you can just fold them, stick them, and then put them straight on. I'm going to do the center stitching, mainly just because I like the look of it. There's not really any other reason for it. I just think it looks pretty. So I'm going to mark the center, and I'm just using a normal ball pen because it's the back of the vinyl and it won't show through and it's fine. You can, if you want to, use chalk or an erasable pen, friction pen, whatever. And then I'm going to take some double-sided tape and put that along that centre line. Now off camera, I don't tend to mark that centre line anymore when I'm speed sewing because I can eyeball centre better without the line there, weirdly enough. And if it's one or two mil off, it's not going to affect your bag. The only reason we do this is so we don't have raw edges showing. All right, so I'm just gonna peel off the tape backing. Like so. Bend down both the sides to that center line. Then I come and do the other end so that everything's gonna line up. And so now it's just a matter of coming along and pressing down. Practice really does make perfect. I am getting way faster at doing that than I used to be. So there's one. Do the same to all four. So I find it easier to seal your ends because then you know that they're dead straight and then you can come to the other end. Now if you've got a vinyl that's uh, thicker or stiffer, grab your handy dandy scoring thing or your credit card or license or whatever and just score the edges down again. When I use glitter vinyl um, I find it a lot stiffer and it doesn't like to stick as easy as this so this comes in very very handy and they're like three dollars. I think you can get them on eBay for like 99 cents or something ridiculous. Um, because this um, tape will hold this vinyl, I am going to stick all four instead of just doing them one at a time. If you're also being more stubborn, fold one, stitch one, fold one, stitch one, and you can just still chain stitch them. But once they're stitched down, they can't really go anywhere. So I don't really have a secret to this except practice. All right, so I'm going to face it right side up. I've got my stitch length on three and three quarters, and I'm just gonna stitch one eighth of an inch from the center line. So I'm gonna line the center of the side of my foot up with the center. So the trick is here, don't look at the needle ever. Um, if you can't eyeball it yet, uh, just draw a centre line with some chalk or something, or you can do it from the back. I just always like the top stitching. I think it's a little bit prettier. I know it's almost the same, 
but almost and actually are a little bit different. So I'm just watching the center of that foot and making sure there's an even amount of vinyl on each side of it. Chain stitching just saves a little bit of time and a little bit of thread. Okay. So now I'm going to grab my four square rings. So I'm using one inch skinny ones because that's all I've got here at the moment. So I'm just going to, with my thing here, measure one inch and fold one inch over. And then I just put some clips in it. If you don't want to clip it or if you haven't got clips, just put some double-sided tape. That should hold it down for you as well. So I've currently got the back side up. And then I'm just putting the metal thing at one inch and folding over. And that way they will all be the same. I'm also putting the join on the inside so you don't see it. Not that you'll see it anyway, but I just like to remove it so you can't see it. Now, if you wanted your handles removable, you would use D-rings here instead of the square straps um, because then you could use with the D-ring when you use a clip, it will sit in the center. So if you want your handles, all handles removable, instead of squares, use D-rings everywhere or round rings or you know, whatever you've got. Okay, so now we need to take this and measure two and a half inches from the center. I'm going to have to hit pause. There is someone in my driveway. Sorry, guys. That is another box of interfacing because you guys are buying it so fast. I have to keep ordering it like once a week. Anyway, we have our lines. You can't really see them, um, but they should be five inches apart. And then we are going to take our strap handle connected things. I don't know, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to sit the line to the inside and then line that up there and stitch it down. So I actually didn't draw my line up the whole way. I didn't measure it, but it's up most of the way. I highly doubt that I got the last little bit crooked if the rest was straight. Make sure we backstitch. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to try and trim my tails as I go for the whole thing. It's a good habit to be in. Alright, so then on the outside again of the line. You don't want your handles too close together, it won't evenly hold the bag. So if you were to put them on the inside, I think that would be too close. I mean, I could be wrong, but... And then backstitch. Now I've drawn the second ones. So I'm going to just chain stitch straight onto the next one. I'm going to do a couple of stitches, stop with the needle down, and then cut this one off, pop it aside.
the side. I don't really have any top tips on this. Slow and steady wins the race. Don't get too close to your metal bit, I guess. If you go too high, your stitches will be crooked. You don't want that. Okay. Now, if you want to, you could put some rivets in here. Um, I'm fairly confident that that will stay just fine, so I'm not going to. So now we're going to grab our pockets that we did. And we're going to line up that center with the center of the bag. And we're going to back stitch and then stitch it up. You just want to make sure it's in line. You don't want it to be crooked. Uh, so if you need to, draw a line. And then we're going to back stitch through the vinyl part. And then forward stitch again. That's just going to really lock it in because that there will be a stress point. So you want to make sure that it's nice and firm. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over and line up the edge and then I'm going to baste around the whole edge of the pocket so that again all the edges will then be one piece. You can st skip this step if you want to um, but I do find it easier to baste the pocket down. Because when we're trying to stitch it to everything else now it's just one piece. Also, you'll want to do this if you're going to put the piping in. So you could add the piping. Now that this is all based down, um, you could add the piping to here if you were going to do piping. We're not doing piping today because I just didn't have enough vinyl. I stretched it for the stuff that I've got. Okay. So then again, we're going to line up that center with the center <clears throat> and if you're not confident in your line draw one with an erasable pen because <coughs> then you can see it line up at the top whoops all right so then again we're going to bend it and baste it up there if you need to put some clips in it to help you baste it so it won't move around while you're trying to needle down pivot and then up the side and back stitch okay so that is now the outside main panels done So now I'm going to take my zipper pieces and cut a piece of zip to match. So I've started doing this instead of pre-measuring in case I botch it. So now I can just literally put along the edge and then chop. Also by having this here it prevents me from forgetting it during the video because that's a thing too. Alright so we're going to take one lining piece. And then so we're going to have that right sides up, put the zipper right sides up on top of it, and then get a outside piece and put right sides down. Now the pattern calls for foam on this piece. I don't like to put foam on this piece. Um, oh, and another thing I've done to this pattern is I have chopped off a quarter of an inch along this edge because they want you to um, tuck it under. And I don't do that, obviously. I'm just going to stitch it on and if I didn't chop it off it wouldn't fit the bag all right so that is now all attached I want to go to a two and a half joining length stitch length so I'm going to back stitch Stitch 
stitch along and then I'm going to pivot and I'm just going to bring this top layer over, finger crease it and then top stitch along it. Trim off all the tails. Alright, so that's one side done. Now we're just going to do the same to the other side. Uh, if you're more advanced at sewing, you can actually just not even pin it. It just means that you will have to adjust it as you go. So I've got, I've got this piece between those two fingers and then my thumb and my main finger are pinching this. And then I'm using my other hand and I just line them all up. It can be done, I just have to stop them. Uh, but if you're a beginner and you've never made a bag or you're still new to bag making, do the other way and pin it. Right. So now, before we forget, we put our zipper pulls on. So I've got my fork thing, which today is just off camera, unfortunately. Um... Actually, you know what? I can twist it so you can see. Alright, so this is my fork. It's got a lot of other crap on it. Um, it's holding on my stuff, actually. So it's holding... A fork up here is holding the zipper head. And then I'm just going to split the zip a little bit. And feed it on. The reason we don't do it before now is because the zipper pull gets in the way. You just want to make sure that it goes on evenly, like that. And then I'm going to put two zipper pulls on so you can open the bag like this, instead of just one. You can do just one, but on big bags, I personally like to do two. It's entirely up to you. It's your bag, make it how you like. Right. Nope. We got a bubble. But sometimes, if you don't get the zipper on perfectly, you get a little bubble. That's better. So you want them to sit nice and flat and together. You don't want them to kind of bubble out at one side. It means that you fed the zip in crooked. Okay. So now we've got that. We need our D-ring connectors because they're going to attach here like so. Um, so that you can carry the bag over your shoulder, which a lot of this is for that. So somewhere just here, I had the connector pieces. Oh no, I'm dropping everything. Hold on. Right, so I've got one six inch piece here. So what I'm going to do is apparently drop everything on the floor today. I'm going to put some tape down the center. And again, you'll notice that I didn't rule the line, but that's because I know what I'm doing. And the camera's on a funny angle. Of course it is. Alright, so we're going to fold both sides into the center, like so, and then I'm just going to cut it in half, like that, and then I'm going to grab my two D-rings, slide them into the center and fold that over, and then I'm just going to stitch up, over, and down. Now, you can do the center stitching if you want to, uh, but it's not necessary. And you won't really see much of this, which is why I've opted not to do it. Now, you don't want to get too close to the ring because you want your foot to kind of push up against it. If you want to get closer to the ring, use your zipper foot. I'm going to chain stitch these, put the next one in. And I'm stitching about one eighth of an inch from the edge. There we go. So now we can take these and that's where they're going to sit to hold the bag. 
Well, that's where I'm going to put them anyway. So from here, we want to grab our end caps, basically, is what they are. Uh, so you should have two of these and two of the linings. So I'm actually going to do the lining ones first. So you can set all of that just off to the side. Now, if my calculations are correct, this should fit pretty relatively schmickish. It's a, still a little bit big, which shocks me because I did already cut off half an inch. Looks like I need to cut off a full inch of the pattern. Uh, if you're using a different zip size to me, so I'm using zips number five. If you're using a different zip size, like a three or a four, your gap will be more or less, probably less actually. So I'm going to do both the linings. So I'm just, I didn't really explain what I'm doing. So I'm just stitching the linings together like I do with um, the Swoon, uh, Stella, and I don't know, I do a lot of bags like this actually. I do this for the Maisie by Swoon as well. So we're just going to stitch just the linings and we're just going up to the zipper and then not over the zipper yet. We will go over the zipper in a minute. So now we should have some extra floppy pieces. So if you're worried that you won't leave enough of a gap, you can actually now grab all of that and clip it there. If you're new to bag making, probably clip it there. I don't need to, but we're going to for this video to help you. So I'm going to clip it to there. Like that. So then we're going to take this panel and stitch it, but we're going to move the lining out of the way. Ah, no, see, that's exactly what we didn't want to do. We don't want to go over the zip because that's in the way. I'm going to go to the zip. <sighs> I'm so tired today. I'm just not with it. Right, so we go to the zip like that. Then we open this out so it's flat and then stitch the gap between the two parts. So we're going to stitch over that middle bit, but we don't want to go too far over because you still want these to be separate because it's going to help to sew everything together later. Now to reinforce this, I'm going to pivot it around and then sew on an angle like this. And I'm just going to go just over the vinyl and then I'm going to go back and do a third one. So what this does is because the, the whole bag will be carried from these two points if you're carrying it via the shoulders. So you want this to be like exceedingly strong. So going over it several times gives it an added little amount of strength, I guess. Okay, so we're going to grab our other one. Make sure that's down out of the way. You don't want to stitch your metal. That's not ideal either. Just up through the zip, but not over it. Same with the other side, pulling the lining out of the way. I'm getting a lot of tails, I know. Then open this out flat and join the two. Pivot and then we're going to go slightly diagonally over that again, get to the other side, needle down, pivot and go back again. If you want to check the durability, just kind of tug at it a little bit and see how strong that truly is. take some scissors because I've made mine still a little bit too big and just trim this off so it's even like that. Now 
If it's even now, it'll be easier to do later. And I just know that I have to take a little bit more off my pattern. But that's cool. So I'm doing the lining pieces as well. It's all easy now. It will be easy later. Okay. Ta-da! So I'm going to take one of my lining pockets and I'm going to attach it to the lining only. So I didn't um, baste around the whole one of these so I'm going to have to go slower or I could go and baste it. So I just want to stitch it. I just want to make sure that it's going to join to all of the edges because it's going to stick out a little bit. It is designed to do that. So I'm going to start with a side piece and then go along the bottom. And again, I'm doing all of this with a 1 8 seam allowance, so it's all just basted in place. And then this side, it is going to have a section, so it's going to be taller than it needs to be, which is fine. So then I'm just going to baste up the side and backstitch. So now my lining has a cute pocket. Same to the other side. All right. So we're going to line up that edge. Now you can clip this if you want to. If you're not going to clip it and you're not succeeding this way, you can always stitch the bottom and then up each side as well. That'll create more tails but less clipping. I've got a piece of my hair that's come out and keeps tickling my nose. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Now we can do the same to the outside pockets. Now these ones are firmer, so I might actually use clips for this. So you line up the bottom, because the bottom should be the same width. That's the way the pattern's designed. And then the gusset piece got skinnier and the pocket piece gets wider. All right, so you can just come along and clip it like this to make sure all the edges are lined up. just based around that. Now if you wanted to you probably also could have put foam on these end cap pieces. Um, I don't like too much foam in my bag, it gets too bulky. pockets and the way that they're done because uh, they'll hold stuff which is always good the inside pockets as well if you wanted to you didn't have to um stitch them together you could have binded the insides it just means that they will sit a little bit higher so currently my outside pockets will sit higher than my inside pockets. That's not an issue, it's just that. But I personally felt that the vinyl was too bulky for the inside ones. All right, so now they, it's like oven mitts. Obviously that's not what we're making, but it is still like that. All right, so I'm just going to open my zip now so that I remember. And then I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to find my centerpieces. 
I'm going to use some scissors to clip it because um, I don't want to use clips like my clips because I cut myself with them a lot. It is not ideal, I promise. All right, so there are my center points now on that. So I can put that aside and we're going to move on to the inside. So the inside of this bag, I didn't even read what it does. I just, I'm doing my own thing. So I'm just going to have one zipper pocket. So it's a really big zipper pocket. So this piece of fabric is 12 by 16 and a half. Right? So that, when I fold it over, it will pretty much take up the whole bag. But that's okay. That's what I want. I want one really big pocket. And then if I was to make this to sell, I would um, pair it with like a little zippered pouch of some description. Um, possibly the diamond pouch by... Oh, who's it by? I don't know. But I do have the pattern and it is very cute. And I have done a video on it, so I should remember this. My brain is mush today. I apologize. All right. So we always have where the crease is. We have the bit we didn't draw on at the top. And so then we're just going to line it up centery ish So I'm just making sure that there's an even amount here. And I want to leave a little bit at the bottom. So I'm on my two and a half stitch length. I'm just going to sew around the box that I drew. So my box was half an inch down from the fold. And then the space in between the two lines here is three-eighths of an inch. This is also the only piece that I never interface. I don't like this piece being too thick. It irritates me. So I don't. I have, um, I have, uh, what's it called? Oh my god, now I can't think at all. I have interfaced it in other bags and videos and I just find it to be thick and heavy and that's not what I want from my pocket. Alright, bend it in half, make a little snip and then we're just going to cut down the centre until we get about half an inch from the end and then we're going to do what's called, tri what I, I call it triangling it out, I don't actually know what it's called. Like that, so we get a triangle. We're going to do that to both ends. Now you want to get as close to the stitching as you can without actually cutting the stitching. If you do accidentally cut the stitching, just go back and stitch that little cornery bit again. <laughs> Alright, so push your pocket through the hole. And then I always use my thumbs, I kind of tuck them in like this to push out the sides. Now, you can either finger press this or iron it. That is entirely up to you. I'm going to finger press it. This bag actually would have been really nice with a grey waterproof lining, but I too have run out. Okay. Then I need some more zipper tape. So I'm going to make it go the full width of the fabric, uh, not just the pocket hole, because that way I won't have any of the edges showing. They will all be stitched into the side seams. Okay, so grab your zipper, split your zip, and then feed it on like so. Now, I always like my zips to go from left to right. That is something that you may or may not wish to think about. So then I'm just going to lay the zipper over the pocket hole, making sure that the edge here of the zip is lined up with the edge of the fabric. And then just stitch around. So I'm just doing it in sections. You could pin it if you wanted to. I'm just going to move the zipper further down out of my way. Need a 
needle down and then zip past my foot. So now it's still not in the way. Needle down, pivot. I'm going to tug on this to make sure that it's nice and crisp in the corner. Down and pivot. Needle down, zip past it. And then back to the start and back stitch. Now I have seen people not start in the corner and that's fine. You can start in the middle if you want. There's no right or wrong spot. So I'm just going to zip this open and then let the back pocket fall down and it should fall pretty much in half of itself. And then we're just going to stitch the side and we make sure we back stitch at the top and the bottom. We also want to make sure we're going over that zip. And voila, one side pocket. So now we want to, so the other pot, the other side I'm actually just going to leave plain. You could put another zipper pocket, you could put a slip pocket, you could do anything you like really. There's no right or wrong. You could put more of the outside pockets on the inside. Um, I love pockets, but I don't love love pockets. So that's enough for me. I'm just going to fold this in half now and find the center at the top and the bottom. So we need to do this to all the panels because this will make for easier lining up. In half. Ta-da! Okay, so now we can grab our beautiful gusset piece and start clipping it together. So I'm going to get the two clips that I've made and line them up because they should be centered. And I'm going to make my clips face the gusset piece. It's easier to stitch that way with the gusset piece face up and it's easier to pull off the clips if the gusset piece is face up. So then we're going to come down, I've done across the top but before I get to the curve, I'm going to grab the, so you've got to grab the pocket, because obviously this is the bottom of the bag here, and line up those bottom pieces, and then I'm going to work my way up to the curve to make sure that the bottom is even, and then any kind of excess will go into the curve. Now this is why we didn't stitch all of these pieces here together because this is the outside and we want to be able to join it easily. So you also want to make sure that your uh, seam allowance faces down towards the bottom of the bag. Grab some more clips. Sorry, I clip in my lap. I know that's possibly not as helpful to you. Um, and I'm also, to make sure that this fits, I'm putting my thumbs in and bending it so it's a 3D object. Because it's not going to sit flat, and if you try and pin it flat, it won't fit. Right? So that side fits perfectly. We're going to come across, and we're going to do the other side now. So grab the bottom, which has got the pocket on it. And then join that up here with the clips facing the gusset side. And then we get through the join and we make sure that those seam allowances are pointed towards the bottom of the bag. Now we are going to do that on the outside pieces as well as the inside pieces. And I feel like I just said that two years. Alright, and then hold it in as a 3D object that the curve is and then just run some clips in. So now I've got all those clips on. So now we can just stitch it up. So I want to have gusset facing up and I'm using a half inch seam allowance and I'm back stitching at the start and I'm just going to hold all of this out of the way with like my arm.
put away the clips as we go so that they aren't in my way. Sure, we backstitch at the end. That was possibly a few too many backstitches. It won't hurt it, it's just excessive. All right, and then I'm just going to come and trim down the seam allowance because I don't need that much. I am going to leave a little bit at the top though, um, and I will show you why later. If you've seen any of my bags where I have gusset pieces, I do the same thing in all of them. We're going to tap it towards the end. But now we have. I know it doesn't, I know it's just like a big mess at the moment. But I've now got a wall. So now I'm going to the other wall of the lining. And the reason we do the lining first is because it's more malleable. So it's manipulative and you can move it around. If I was to do the outside with the foam first, you'll find it much, much more difficult to then put the lining in. So we deal with the lining first and then we do the outside. But these floppy pockets are kind of annoying at the moment. I'm not going to lie, they are annoying me a little bit. So we pin the straight edge along the top. Like so. And then we're going to come down to the pocket and the bottom and then line those up. And then we clip up back towards the curve. Again, we're making sure that this seam allowance points down towards the bottom of the bag. And now that I'm up to the curve, I'm going to stick my thumbs in. So basically I make the curve with my thumbs. Like that. Nope, that wasn't it. There we go, like that. And then you can just come in and clip that. So it will look a little bit wavy, but the waviness is outside of the seam allowance. So it's irrelevant. All right, so then again, line up the bottom on the other side. And then clip upwards but making sure that this seam allowance points downwards. Basically, I always clip right on that seam allowance because it helps. All right, fold that top out of the way. And then again, we're going to curve your fingers and clip. like so. So now I've got our other wall on. So I'm going to do gusset side up and then this obviously I'm going to just bend it out of the way because it's in my way. Back stitch at the start and then off we go. And then I just miss that so I've lift I've stopped with my needle down and lifted my foot um, to make sure that that seam allowance will be sewn in the downward position. Especially because the other side is, you don't want it to have a twisty bit. Needle down, adjust, move all of that bit out of my way. No, it doesn't stand up. Oh, it might actually. It almost stands up by itself. There you go. And that's remembering that we didn't put foam in the outside parts of this and it still stands up by itself. So that's a good sign, just FYI. All right, so this is my bottom of the lining, obviously. So we're gonna fold it in half and then in half again. And then they are the points for the centers. So we're gonna chop it just a little bit off. And then same here. 
so that they are now the four central points. So then the side opposite the pocket, we're going to leave open. So we want to clip it to the side of the pocket. So we're going to line up those center points. And I'm going to leave the bottom of the lining of the bag open, turn the bag through there, and then we'll stitch it up through the zipper pocket. Just because you may not do a bigger zipper pocket as I have, I could actually fit it through there. Um, but if you don't do the same size as me, it will be more difficult. So we won't do it like that. We will, however, chop off those tails. All right. So then the side, the side pieces, fold that in half and find the center. Like that. And then that side, well, side bit joins up with that side bit. And so then you can just clip around the base and it should fit if you've done the right seam allowance it should fit lovely if it doesn't fit if your these pieces are too big you can just go back and re-stitch but a little bit closer so take it in like another eighth of an inch to make it that little bit smaller if you've got the opposite problem uh you will have to unpick it and just do a slightly less seam but do the less seam first and then unpick it because then you don't have to line anything up. And again, I'm joining, uh, lining up the sides and then I'm just bending that in so it fits nicely. So I am going to line up this center side with just one clip and then work my way out to where it starts to go around the bend and then I'm going to clip the bend. I can take that clip out now. I'm going to clip the bend and then stop on the straight. So I just want to leave like this part of the bag open. And like I said, you can most definitely turn it through the pocket if you've done a pocket big enough um but pockets are always harder to turn out than just the bottom okay so i'm happy with that so i'll just show you so we're leaving that much of a gap at the bottom so i'm going to start at the start of the gap, or the end, I suppose, depending on which way you look at it. Needle up, needle down. And I'm just rotating the bag down and around as I go. Straight bits are obviously quicker because I put less clips in. And then again, I'm going to rotate the bag again. Using a half inch seam allowance, don't forget that either. Okay. The inside of your bag is pretty much done. Now we're up to our outside pieces. So they're both the same, they're identical. Therefore, it doesn't really matter which one's the front and which one's the back. Uh, if you have done a panel or something on one and you want one or one just looks nicer, just think about where you want that inside zipper pocket. I usually have it on the back wall. So if this is the front of the bag and I open it, then I can see the zipper pocket. That's how I logically put that the way that I want it. Okay, so I've clipped the top, then I'm going to come to the bottom of this pocket and I'm going to first clip this off because I don't want this hanging out of my seam. Um, also, if you were doing piping, do it now. If you didn't do it before when I suggested it. Alright, and you want your clips to face the gusset piece. 
Now this, I'm going to use a lot more clips. I don't know if you've already noticed that, but there's a lot more kind of resistance from everything. Which is natural. It is foam and all the heavy interfacings, not the soft ones. Whereas the inside was all just a medium weight iron-on, which is actually quite light, in my opinion. So again, we're clipping around and around and around. And then we're going to come to the bottom of the other side and work our way up again. Now, if I was doing piping, I would be switching to either a piping foot or piping foot, uh, which can also be uh, really skinny zipper feet. Uh, for domestic machines, you can actually get feet that are designed for both, so the, um, it's all adjustable. So again, I want to make sure that this is facing down. Even though it's quite bulky there, you still want it facing down. And then again, I'm going to use my thumbs and make that shape and then clip it all in. I need a few more clips than I grabbed. Voila! Way more clips than the lining, but that's okay. Then I'm just going to fold all of this down. So I can see what I'm doing, and you can see what I'm doing. A um, couple of stitches, back stitch, and off we go. So again, we just want to point that down. Now if you've got piping, you can just follow the piping line that you already stitched on. that I'm throwing everywhere. All right. You want to go slowly over the part where all the vinyl is too. You don't want it too thick and snap a needle. So slow and steady wins the race when you get to that bit. And then you can come back in and check it to make sure that there's no pin tucks or anything in your seam that you just stitched. We are good. Okay last side. So again I'm going to do the straight part first, then I'm going to come around to the side and I'm actually clipping the um, what's it called pocket? The, the binding, so it's the level. Lots of clips. That face down. Hold it as a curve. It is a 3D object after all. And you'll find it's quicker to clip. And then we're going to come to the other side. I missed some tails here again. Line it all up. And then I've just got this last corner, so I'm going to fold all of that out of the way. Oops, I just lifted a clip. That was not the plan. Okay, and then in it goes. Voila, lots and lots of clips. Let's go again. Ooh. 
slow and steady over the bulky part. Whoops. Clips are going everywhere today. Looking pretty good. So you can see in the bag, looks really cool. All right, so now we need our base piece. Now if you're putting bare feet on your bag, now is the time. I am still waiting for my new feet to arrive. I have ordered, um, not those scissors. I have ordered Chicago rivet feet because I no longer like the split pin style. I have seen a lot of people where they're breaking lately. That does not inspire confidence. So I don't want to use them anymore. So I am getting both riveted ones so that you can rivet them on. And I am getting Chicago screw feet, which are super cute. So I'm just folding it in half to find the centers. I always forget to do it, but you should do this before you put the stabilizer on because it will be way easier. Alright, so then we're going to do the same as we did to the lining of the other part, except we're going to do all four sides. We're not leaving a gap on this one. Now again, I'm going to want to use a lot of clips because I'm now fighting the stabilizer and the foam and the extra heavy interfacing on all parts of the bag and all the fabric. There's a lot more resistance. So do the straight bit like that and then I'm going to switch and do the opposite side I like this bag it's a good size actually and then I'm going to come to the sides I actually didn't mark the sides, but I'm going to do that now, even though it's all conjoined. That's fine. I'll do the other side as well, so you can just... Snip. Okay, and so then you can line those centre snips up with each other. And then I've just got this last little corner bit. Now I'm making my um, clips face the base because the base will actually be face up. And then we can just do the other side. So at this point, I think you'll find that your base is pretty much sitting where you want it to be anyway. It doesn't really go anywhere now that I've got this many clips and this much force against it. I've seriously thrown like 10 clips on the floor in this video. Holy moly. All right, last side. So if you line up the center point, like I said, I think you'll find that everything else will just kind of line up as well. Then you can work out towards the corner. Like so. A gazillion clips but theoretically this won't move so I've used extra clips because now when I kind of do this it's 
not going to pop out of place. So I'm going to start here on the flat part and then go around the bag like so. So I need to remove a clip to be able to get my foot in there. Actually, I need to remove two. So a couple of stitches forward and back. And then off we go. So slow and steady wins the race. Your sewing machine is stitching through a lot of layers right now, like a lot. And you might find that it'll struggle with the corner, so you just have to kind of hold it up. Because again, 3D object. I know I say that a lot. So I currently don't actually, you know what, I'm going to change angles for you. Hold on. There you go, now you can kind of see what's going on in here. So I'm on like a thick corner and I'm trying to get back to like a flat point. So this, this is always the hardest bit, those little corners there. And then stuff should kind of ease up as you get back to the flat bit. But again, I wouldn't go too fast because you've got vinyl, foam, heavy interfacing, at least two layers of that, plus your fabric, plus your lining fabric, plus your lining interfacing. Like there's just a lot of layers. And then where the strap connectors are, you've got more vinyl again. Bulky corner, bulky corner. Now I'm just going to go a couple of stitches past where I started and then reverse. And I just stitched all of that with no bobbin thread. That was not ideal. All of my beautiful pinning for nothing. <sighs> it's not my day today, people. Not my day. Lift your foot when you um, wind your bobbin so that you don't uh, damage the underneath with the feet. Feet dogs. You don't want to damage your feet with the feet dogs. I know what I'm trying to say. Again, I don't want it too full because I don't want it to break on me and stuff up. Alright, I'm actually going to hit pause and redo this. Alright, stitched on. So now I'm going to take my big scissors and I'm just going to cut off some of the excess so that the bottom is going to sit nice and flat well flatter mainly at the corners like that and then I'm going to come and trim off some of the corner up here. So that will sit nice and flat as well. So I'm going to do that to both sides. You don't want to trim off too much. Just a little bit. All right. So now what I'm going to do is my handy dandy little trick. I'm going to line up my lining piece with my outside piece along that zipper gusset and I'm just going to stitch probably two inches along. What this is going to do is this is going to tack the bag to the top so that you don't have a floppy lining at your gusset piece. So you don't want to stitch it the whole way because then it's really hard to turn inside out. But you just do, you know, two inches-ish, like that much. 
making sure that the centers are all lined up, which is just one more awesome reason to do the centering thing. Ah, Back stitch it like that. So now I've just got just that little bit there attached. So now when I stick my hand through the bag, I'm going to grab a corner, push it in so I can actually grip it, and then just pull that out through the bottom of the bag, which should come pretty easy. I use my thumbs to push most of it, so I'm just going to grab my thumb and push it in, like so. And then just pull the outside out. And then I'm going to stick my hand back in and push, like so. Just going to push the bag out. Then we just grab this and flick that over. Now, even though I don't have foam in there, it still sits nicely because I've done the extra heavy interfacing and the foam in the front and back panel. So that actually still sits really nicely and it's just a little bit less bulky, right? So then the inside, see how this inside isn't kind of sagging here? It's because we tacked it. More ha ha ha. All right. Stick your hand in your pocket and then grab that base and we're just going to pull the base part through your pocket so that you can stitch it up. Now this should be a pretty easy exercise because it's only the straight bit that we left unstitched so you don't have to try and do a curve or anything like that. It should just be a nice quick little straight section. So I'm just going to pull it out and do it little bits at a time. Back stitch. And then that can go back in the bag. And then I'm gonna pull out my pocket, which looks crooked, but it's not, it's just really big. And then I'm going to just kind of tuck those under like that, and then stitch the pocket shut. Now you want to get as close as you can to that edge without actually falling off it. Just got to... I'm just going to push out this bottom a little bit more. Uh, but it's looking good. Okay, so now all that's left is all of our handles. So I've got a bunch of stuff going on here. We're going to do the normal handles first. And then we will do um, the other two, I guess. So I've got four pieces here that are 20 inches long. Uh, two are handles. Well, actually four handles. They're all handles, but they're all just different types of handles. I'm going to put sticky tape approximately in the middle, like I always do. And then fold each side into the center. Again, I seem to just do this quicker without that line. It's like the line judges me. You can eyeball center pretty well. And then I'm going to go to the other end and make sure that that's nice and lined up because we will see these edges. They are attachable straps. Um, the only way it won't matter about your edges is if you get those really cool, like, strap ends. They are cool. I should look at getting some, actually. All right. So now, this is just a full width of fabric, and it was one and a half inches wide, but I have... Um, 
folded down to three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to fold over that end and then line it up in the center and stitch it on. So I want a nice long stitch length of three and three quarters. Needle down, pivot, line it up, so I'm just holding it in the center and stitching little bits at a time. Uh, if you wanted to, you could put some double sided tape down. And then when I get close to the end, I'm just going to cut probably half an inch past the end so that I've got something to tuck in because you don't want to see that raw edge on the strap. So I just tuck it in. Then we're just going to do the same again. Oh, hold on. There's someone in my driveway again. All right. So, funnily enough, that was a delivery for the bag feet that I was talking about at the start of this. Anyway, too late now. I'm not turning the whole bag inside out. Well, I might later, but not on camera. Okay, next strap. So again, I have folded it in half. I'm going to turn down the edge and then line up wrong sides together. And I'm going to start in the middle, back stitch, forward stitch. Then pivot and then hold it in the center and stitch down the edges. Now I am on a three and three quarter stitch length here and I am stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric, not the vinyl. So I obviously want to sew the um, fabric on. You can get closer to the edge of the fabric if you want to, um, but it is a dangerous game getting too close. Now I'm just going to stop a couple of inches before the end again, grab my scissors snip off the excess a little bit turn down under that edge needle down pivot stitch along back stitch when you get back to the end I also need to get a um I need to go to the street and get a lighter. My husband stole my one. Uh, but otherwise, melt the ends with your lighter and remember to use the blue part of the flame and not the red part. Now, I did this off camera because you probably don't really want to watch me iron. But this I have I have a join in, which you can see, but only a little bit. But what I did was I did it on the angle. And then I've ironed it open so it's flat. So that is actually a very flat feeling join. You can't see like a lot of bulk, which is good. Um, so this is way too long to what I need, but I am just going to trim it down like I just did for the last slide. So again, I need to put some sticky tape in the center. I'm going to just move the bag off the sewing machine table because it's in my way. So again, double-sided tape in the center. Now again, if you can't center by looks, feel free to draw a line. But I've been playing this game a lot lately, and it turns out practice really does make perfect. So this is going to be a 2-inch strap, because I've got 2-inch hardware. Um, I do actually need to source some metal 2-inch hardware, because I'm currently just using the plastic. Uh, but I will get onto that. Then it will be on the website when I can find it. So these things aren't as easy to find as you might think. There's not just one magical hardware store that has everything I need. I mean, the end goal is that's me, but you know, whatever. Anyway, pull off your backing 
And then we're going to fold the centers in. Now, the, you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. You could do an all fabric strap. You could do an all vinyl strap. The issue with all vinyl strap is I wouldn't do it double folded because you can't get it through the strap adjuster. They don't make them thick enough to do all um, vinyl. I mean, you could do all vinyl if you wanted to have raw edges and then you could just use edge coat along the edges. So instead of folding it, you just put two flat and then edge coat the edge. That would work. Um, or you could do it this way and then have like a strip that's like one inch thick of vinyl down the center if you didn't want to have any fabric on your strap. If you were going to do all fabric strap though, I would interface it to give it a little bit of body. And I also wouldn't make an all fabric strap in the white fabric that I'm using. Because it will get dirty too quickly. So they are my many suggestions to you. You could ignore me. You can do it in white. It just means the owner will have to wash the bag a lot more. That's all. And if your bag isn't washing machine friendly, you might find that mums getting a baby bag don't really have time to hand wash their straps. It's just, you know, things to think about. Or if you wanted to do a white strap, maybe do white vinyl because you could just wipe it clean. Not that I don't like white, I just don't like to have the clean white, which is why you very rarely see me wearing white. Fold it over. Alright, huzzah, we're there. So, this is two inches thick, and this one is only one and a half inches thick, so that we're going to get this same kind of look where we get the vinyl on the edge. But I like a fair amount of vinyl as opposed to some people just want like a little, little bit. To me, just a tiny bit. Like if you just took off half or like a quarter of an inch in total. So if you made your strap four and then this piece three and three quarters, it kind of just, if you do too little, it looks like you cut it the wrong size. So this way, with the actual chunk, it show, like it makes it look more like it's deliberate and not like you cut it the wrong side. That's just my opinion. That's why I drew them, you know, half an inch shorter. You get a quarter of an inch on each side. I like the look of that. If you wanted to get super fancy, you can always put piping down the side of your handle. That could be fun. Alright, so I'm coming up to that join. I'm not really worried about it, I'm just telling you. Now before you all ask where I got this fabric, it's um, an old one I've had in my cupboard. I've been meaning to make it into a baby bag for ages. I've just only now got around to it. Uh, but the vinyl colour is called Brazil Nut. And uh, the lining, the grey zigzag, was actually um, like a backing to a panel that you could get from Spotlight. It might still be there. close to the edge so we'll slow down back stitch strap done see that looks fun so it's white but wearing it regularly you're not going to dirty it so the first thing I'm going to do is put it onto the strap adjuster Now you can rivet this, I'm just going to stitch it. 
and then I'm going to go over an eighth of an inch and do another line like that so I've just got two lines nothing dramatic but it's just an extra hole I don't think this will fall off at all you could also put uh, three rivets across this if you wanted to just chopping off all the tails because I didn't chop it in between so I just had like this random bit all right so these ones completely swivel so it doesn't really matter which way you put it on so long as the vinyl is gonna fold onto itself like this and then we're gonna go up in one side and then down the other now this might fight you mine's fighting me because it's just not my day but sometimes the um the fabric likes to lift a little bit making it more difficult to go through but it will go okay so fold this over I don't want too much excess I just want enough to have two lines without hitting the plastic and making it difficult That's one and two and that my dears is the sewing part done You'll notice I look up at the camera a lot more. I recorded a video the other day and it stopped recording. So now I'm really paranoid and keep looking at the camera. Just ignore that. That's my own issue. All right, so adjustable strap is done. Now we just need to attach our handles. Now I'm gonna rivet these because I like the look of rivets, but you can most definitely stitch them on if you want to. So I need a ruler. And some kind of markingness. Now I'm going to go one and a half inches up from the top and then half an inch down. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I know that this takes a while to dry and I don't want to smudge the first line like the closest one. So I now do them the opposite way. Flip them over and do the same on the other end. So one and a half inches up and then half an inch up. Now if I was using the thicker metal I would go one and three quarters inch up so you need that extra quarter inch for it to be able to get around the metal so now I'm just going to grab my hole punch and some free stopper glue because there is fabric on this side Just punching all the holes. Now, this is actually still the same rivet hole punch thing that I've had for all the videos. I keep saying I'll get a new one, and I keep forgetting to go to Bunnings to get one. So, it's okay. It is a little bit on the blunt side, but it still eventually cuts through the hole. So that's all that matters. Maybe I just need to clean it or something. Anyway. So I'm going to take my fray up glue, tip it upside down so I can see it in the nozzle, and then it just comes out like water. So you just have to like touch it on. Nothing dramatic. And you only need a little bit, and this will just, I don't want this to fray outside of the rivet. So this will just prevent that. Make your bag last longer. And this one, I think it's like seven or eight dollars. I've had this for years multiple plural lots of and it's still going strong so that's good okay rivets one two three four so there's my rivets and the rivet press and the bag so all I need to do is get a handle and I'm gonna go up so the vinyl is on itself and then poke it through the two holes and put a cap on the top of that so you'll either hear it click or you'll feel it kind of go it'll get 
it'll just, yeah, basically click into place, but sometimes it doesn't make a click noise. So I'm going to come through and do the other one again. Poke it through one hole and then through the other. And this should fit easily around the metal without being too much. And then using my rivet press, squish it down. Through, it doesn't matter which hole you go through because these are double capped rivets, which means that they're smooth on both sides. If you've got single capped rivets, you would put the bit you don't want to see on this side. So when you pick up the bag, the nice bits are facing out. I do have some double cap rivets. I use them when I don't need to see the back, like it's built into the bag. So for example, if I was if I had have put rivets here, I could have used single capped rivets because you wouldn't see the inside. Alright, I definitely forgot the last lot of strap connectors because I'm not used to doing them. So I just forgot they existed apparently. So what I'm gonna do is put some double-sided tape in the middle of this, but not right to the edge. So I'm gonna leave like a gap. Just over half an inch, not too much, because uh, I'm going to stitch these together in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push the vinyl through the strap connector, like that, and get it somewhere in the middle so it's not in the way. And then I'm gonna stitch that together. So you don't have to use a huge seam allowance, um, you just want to make sure that it's even with the other one. That's what we care about more because these are going to be straps that need to be even. So again, feed it on, join them together. What this is going to do is hide your seam. So I'm then going to open it and stitch it out just so it's going to sit beautifully flat for me and these stitches are going to help to hold that down. It's also like a nice little accent. So I'm just stitching one eighth of an inch either side of that. So now we have a loop. So now all I want to do is I want to peel off the double sided tape and bring both sides into the center. But I'm going to be doing it in a loop. Which may or may not prove more tricky for you. Then I'm going to bring this all the way around so that I can get back to the start like that. And then again, so you, you could have drawn a line if you needed to. One side and then the other. Beautiful. So now you also need to get your piece of fabric or vinyl um, and stitch it on the top to hide that joining seam. So as usual, it's not here. Give me a minute. All right, let's do this. I've already done one off camera because I had another interruption. Uh, hubby come home, blasted through the door being all cute and adorable, but yelling. 
so I took it out of the recording. So I've done one strap, we're just going to do the other one. So I'm just placing this in the center. Now I haven't tucked under that first edge because we don't need to. Uh, and I'm just putting the wrong sides together and holding it in the center. Now you might find this a bit difficult because we do have to keep moving the um, connector thing out of your way. Lobster claw, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just centering it up and stitching along the edge. I'm using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Stitch along. We're nearly back to the start because it's a full circle. And for that reason, what we do is once we get back to that join, I'm going to put my needle down and I'm just going to chop probably an extra three quarters of an inch. Throw that bit out. And then I can tuck this edge under so that there's no raw edges showing. Which is being made more difficult because that side keeps poking out. There we go. So just tuck that under. Stitch over to that edge and then we can go straight across because it should line up perfectly with the other one because it's all the same and then we can stitch back in the opposite direction. And again, this side is probably quicker. Also helps that this didn't really move. It stayed in the same spot so I didn't have to keep adjusting it. Also very cool. And so then when we get back to the start, we can do a couple of back stitches. And then that is done skis. Chop off the tails. Like that. And so now we have this cool loop. Loop-de-loop. -loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually twist this so that it is the flat side is on the vinyl side. And we're going to fold it over like so. So we're not folding it directly at the join because that would be silly and it won't fold. So I'm just folding it kind of as close as it'll let me. And then I'm going to punch a hole between the vinyl join and the fabric join. I'm just going to grab my hole punch, twist it around, and then I've got... Where's my fray stuff of glue? We're going to put some fray stuff of glue on the fabric part. Just You see it come. Just one little dot on each side should do it. If you squeeze the bottle, it'll go everywhere and it's not going to get you anywhere. As bad as that sounds. All right. And make sure you do up the, the lid because uh, if it falls over, it goes everywhere which is how I've lost probably a quarter of that bottle so far. And then I'm just going to squish that down. And so now you've got your two stroller handles and your other handle. And then more handles. Lots and lots of handles for this bag. There we go.